Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News. And I have the pleasure to be joined by the thrill Jordan Gill at the Ben Davison Performance Centre. I mean, first of all, mate, how are you? Yeah, feeling good, thanks. I'm glad to hear it. Before we get into your massive fight with uh, Zelfa Barrett, I do want to touch on your 2023. I mean, just the one fight, but what a fight it was against Michael Conlon. And I mean, how do you reflect on that massive win in December? I enjoyed it. Um, I don't think Conlon enjoyed it, but we can't have it all, can we? Um, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed the fight. It was the first one and the only one of the year, like you said. Um, so I had to make the most of it. And yeah, it was, it was good fun. And I enjoyed the fight week and I enjoyed the fight. And um, you're going to see more of that. April 13th. Definitely, mate. We look forward to seeing it. Obviously, after the fight, you got, uh, I think, Boxing News is Hero of the Year. I mean, you made a very powerful speech after the fight. I mean, as well, a lot of people resonated with it. A lot of people kind of supported you with that as well. I mean, did, did that kind of make the, the win, obviously, a bit more of a sweet, sweeter feeling as well? Um, I don't know if it could make it a sweeter feeling because it, it was... You know, it was all on the line for me that night and I had to win that fight to progress and... and um, you know, move move forward, and I did. So for me, that was that was the uh, icing on the cake. It wasn't all about that. I, it was, wasn't something that I planned to come out and say. But you know, I thought I'd make it clear how hard it was to get to that point, to even get in the ring for that fight. Um, and now everything's you know working well. Everything's in in a, in a better way. And um, I've had a longer time with with Ben and Barry and Lee Wiley in in the performance centre. So. Um, you're only going to see a better version of me, a, a stronger, sharper, uh, more intelligent version. Definitely, mate. We look forward to seeing it. Let's let's touch on that as well. Obviously, you you were we were a massive part of the Ben Davison Performance Centre. I think they had a massive massive year last last year. I mean, like you was just saying off camera, I was surprised that they didn't get a tra trainer of the year like as a as a as a team. I mean, what how does it feel to be a part of the success of this gym last year? Yeah, I feel very grateful. Uh, I feel gr very grateful to be here. Um, and to be learning and and having the time spent on me that that I am, and you know the the Conlon fight, the, the the success that I had in the ring, I owe it to these guys. I owe it to Ben Davis. I owe it to Barry Smith. I owe it to Lee Wiley. And so you know they helped me massively on that journey to to win that fight, and you know they they helped me massively to to win the fight against Zelfa as well. So yeah, I feel very grateful and, and very excited for the future. Definitely, mate. We'll touch on that fight with Zelfa Barra. I mean, a April 13 in Manchester, back, back in the Lions then sort of as well. I mean, but one, an opportunity that you're relishing in taking as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's a great fight. I um, think that, you know, I've shown that I'm, I'm not scared of going to the Lions Den. I did, did it against Conlon in Belfast. I've got to do it in Manchester to fight Zelfa. So um, it is what it is. It's just a ring. Um, He's going to have more support there than me, I'm sure. Um, but I'm excited. I think it'll be a, a very good fight and um, the fans can't fight for him. Definitely, mate. As well, why why was Zelfa Barrett the right uh, right fight for you next after such a massive win against Michael Conlon? Uh, I, I think we're just at both, we're both at similar parts of our career where you know, we both have aspirations of becoming world champion we both have aspirations of getting a world title shot we're both you know like number two and three in the country um, and number one's a, a world champion that's tied up so you know to, to warrant getting a shot um, you have to sort of have a box off and this is like a semi-final for me where you know there's no one else to fight really um, so we've got to fight each other and then the winner can warrant getting a world title shot so um, that's what it is. Um, it wasn't the case where oh, that's the right fight for you. Um, let's pick and choose who we want to fight. It was the case where Jordan, you're fighting Zelfa Barrett, and me saying, "Oh, well, it's, see you later." <laughs> Perfect. Mate. Do you think a win against Zelfa Barrett confirms that shot against uh, Joe Condida or another or another world champion in the world? Yeah, I think so. I think even Joe said it himself in an interview. I didn't see it. But someone said um, that. Um, they asked him about fighting me and, and he said, oh, yes, he doesn't deserve it um, after beating Conlon. Uh, I tell you what, why don't Jordan go and fight Zelfa and then I'll fight the winner. So, you know, we are. And then hopefully he, he stays true to his word. Definitely. Well, hopefully I'm going to try and uh, try and interview Joe. So I'll ask him at the end of the week, mate, as well. Before we uh, before we finish, I do want to touch on a, a few things that you do outside of the ring. Um, first of all, you opened your opened your new gym. Congratulations, mate. Box Cross UK. I mean, why was it important to uh, open this gym you, still still whilst your career is going on? Whilst a lot of fighters do this at the end of their career. Yeah, I mean, it was just an opportunity to come up to to open. Um, it was something that I was excited about. It's something that I'm passionate about. It's always good to have other projects on the go. Um, so, 
yeah it was just um an opportunity too good too good to pass up and you know we've, we've opened it we opened the night for december so a week after the condom fire you know we, we've it's been massively successful and um, we've got hundreds of members now um turning over great money helping people get fit helping people you know feel better about themselves and um, putting on loads of kids classes women's classes you know we have weights we have crossfit we have boxing all sorts so you know it's, it's really been an asset to the community and you know we was already nominated for um best new startup at Fenland Business Awards so yeah it's nice to have the recognition to, uh, on that side of things and you know it's something to, to go into after boxing as well and, and at the moment it's keeping me busy pretty much as well whilst I am boxing so um, there's going to be lots of new developments with the gym um, and other side businesses as well from that so um, it's all go at the moment. Definitely, mate. Another kind of community project you do alongside is uh, is uh, JG Next Gen as well. You're not for profit as well. I imagine there's a lot of things that kind of work in tandem with your gym there. But how how is uh, JG Next Gen going as well? It's going really well. Yeah, it's going really well. Um, we have a lot of interesting characters come in. Um, we have, we try and get get in as much as possible. We do um, a few neat projects with a few different schools. Um, so neat is like not in education. Um, so the kids that have sort of been taken out of mainstream um, say we go in there, we talk to them, we try and boost their self-esteem, boost their confidence, get them talking, communicating in a, in a good way, uh, incorporate with boxing and, and getting them moving and getting a little bit of a sweat on to break down the barriers and, and then get to the root of the problems of, of why they behave in, in an antisocial way. And... You know, it's been it's been great. It's been really uh, really beneficial for for a lot of the kids. And um, we have so many that have been so grateful to be on the program and and to um, you know feel better about themselves and to to get on better at school and um, with the teachers to to have a different view on things like an outsider's point of view um, to to a different way of communicating and, and getting better. Um, just getting better results out of themselves and and you know so a lot of the kids um are never going to be a star students but if we can help them be a, so like less antisocial we can help them you know get a, a passion for something get a drive for something and, and maybe get an apprenticeship or link them up with you know a different business to get a saturday job and then develop from there then that's that's what it's all about, and and that's what we're doing. Um, so that's that's the, the the kids side of things, and we've been doing lots of classes with um, people with um, arthritis and and all sorts. So um, yeah, it's been and and Parkinson's as well. So yeah, we've had uh, some of the older people come in, and their mobility is improving from doing pads and stuff like that with um, with my dad. And um, yeah, we've seen great results both from old to, to young uh, and in the middle as well so yeah it's nice to, to give back and, and see an improvement I'm glad to hear it mate and if there's n if that wasn't a reason why you were uh, here of the year I mean the Michael Conlon win was a, was a massive topping point as well I mean Jordan that was my final one mate any final words for the fans coming to see you uh, all the way from Ch Ch Chatteris to Manchester on April 13th mate um, bring your popcorn it's going to be good bring your popcorn indeed Jordan Gill thank you very much and best of luck mate cheers, cheers.